OK, so to do this problem, ladies and gentlemen, remember we're just going to follow our steps that we, that we want to do. The first thing we always want to take care of is finding the vertical asymptote. Automatically, let's just get that out of the way. So vertical asymptote, remember, you set your denominator equal to 0. All right. So for this problem, fortunately, like that one that was factoring by grouping, right? that was a long one. Here, it's not that bad. I only have one x term, so I can isolate it. So I add 1 to the other side. I get x squared equals 1. Square root, x equals plus or minus 1. You guys remember at the beginning of the year, I harped on you so much about introducing, when introducing a square root that you have to include the plus or minus. This is really going to hurt you in this section if you do not include the plus or minus. right? Because we do not have just one vertical asymptote. We have two vertical asymptotes, x equals 1 and at negative 1. Those are two um, points that are not a part of our domain. Next one, horizontal. So we look at our horizontal test. And we remember with the horizontal asymptote test, we need to compare our degrees. So I look at my degrees, and I say 3 and 2. Therefore, n is greater than m. Right when we were talking about our degrees in the horizontal zero or horizontal asymptote test, so remember when n is greater than m, we have no horizontal asymptotes. So there's none. So if we have no access to horizontal asymptotes, then is that it? Is there any other asymptotes we can can have? And actually, there's one other asymptote that we can look at, which we call a slant, all right, or an oblique asymptote. So what is there? Is there a test for this, or what do we got to do? Vertical, set the denominator equal to 0. Horizontal, you have three options. Take a look at the exponents in the, or, or the degrees, and then you can determine. If you do not have a horizontal, then you're going to have a slant. So to find the slants, since this is a smaller degree, we need to divide it into our numerator. So I could say x squared minus 1 goes into x cubed. All right. You can't use synthetic division because this is a quadratic. right? You can only use it when it's a linear factor, uh, synthetic division. So I go x squared goes into x cubed, x times. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 1 is negative x. All right. And then so this would be a plus a 0 um, x. So then you put in parentheses, and you subtract. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. At 0x zero minus a negative is going to be a positive x. However, does x squared go into x? No. So we write it as plus x divided by x squared minus 1. All right? Now, I'm not going to get too far into this, but what you guys need to understand about the slant, slant asymptote is as my numbers get larger, all right, this number goes to 0. Okay, Because what you notice is my denominator is always going to be bigger than my numerator, right? Denominator is always going to be bigger than the numerator. So as these numbers keep on getting larger and larger and larger, think about it. The denominator is going to keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This is eventually going to go to 0, where it's actually not going to affect my slant asymptote. So all we're going to be concerned about is just our quotient. So our slant asymptote. Our slant asymptote is a linear equation, y equals x. So you take y and you set it equal to your quotient without dealing with the remainder. All right. So just do long division and then determine what your quotient is. And that's going to be your slant asymptote. And I'll talk about that in a second when I'll show you guys how to graph. You don't have to do the graphing because you can graph on your calculator. But I'm going to show you what to do for each one of those. Is everybody cool with that? Any questions? All right. So the next thing that we want to do then is find the x and y intercepts. Remember, x intercept, y equals 0. y intercept, x equals 0. So we just plug them in. Or y equals 0, or in this case, f of x equals 0 since we're dealing with functions. So I have x cubed over x squared minus 1. Here I have f of x equals 0 divided by 0 squared minus 1. So here we multiply by x squared minus 1 on both sides. 
goes to 0, goes to 1. So I'm left with 0 equals x cubed. Take the cube root on both sides, x equals 0. So therefore, the x-intercept is x equals 0. Right? OK, this is, come on, this, on a Monday, this has got to be the most exciting thing you got. Then over here, we have f of x equals 0 divided by negative 1. 0 divided by negative 1 is going to be 0. <sighs> Follow me? A no. little bit? Where did I lose you? Uh, no, you're oh, you're just saying it out loud. You just want to say something. OK, I got you. I got you. So I can say my x-intercept is x equals 0. And my y-intercept, I'll be there in just a second, is when f of x equals 0. So therefore, my graph is going to cross at 0, comma 0, right? And that's it. It's going to cross at 0, comma 0, and that's it. So when you ask for solution points, what do you want to do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would expect you to put this in your calculator and be able to graph it. Then to find the solution point, is a, just use a table. However, if you don't have a graphing calculator, here's what I expect you to do. Um, you need to write in your solution points. So if you guys look at it, we know we have, a, we know we have a, um, an x-intercept, or I'm sorry, we have a vertical asymptote at 1 and a vertical asymptote at negative 1. So what I'd like you to do is preferably choose two points to the left and to the right of each asymptote. For this equation, for this expression, or for this problem, I'm only going to choose one, um, just so we can see where we're at, just to kind of get, get through this problem. So what you do is you're just going to create an xy table. So if I have a vertical asymptote, if you look at the graph, all right, it's going to look something like that, where your vertical asymptote, remember, is not a part of your domain. So you're going to have these vertical asymptotes. And then we also said we have a horizontal or a slant asymptote at y equals x. So if you guys know what the linear y equals x looks something like that. All right. So how do you determine then where your solution points are? I want you to pick two to the left, two to the right, and two between your asymptotes. I'm just going to go through one for each one just to show you what to do. So if this is at negative 1, 1 to the left, why don't we do negative 2? We already know 0 is 0. And then let's just pick 2. All right. So all you do, if you don't have a calculator, is, is f of x equals negative 2. So it would be negative 2 cubed divided by negative 2 squared minus 1. Negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 8 divided by negative 2 squared, so it's negative 8. Negative 8 thirds, which is, um, let's see, 2 and 2 thirds. Right? So I go at negative 2, I'm at like negative 2 and 2 thirds. Then let's do f of 0, which we already know is 0 ends up equaling 0. And let's do f of 2, which is going to be the exact same thing, except it's going to be positive. So it's going to look something like that. Now, I told you guys to pick two points. I don't have time to go through two points. But if I look at my calculator, I know I end up getting that this graph is going to look something like this. All right. And then does this start up here? And go like that? Uh, like this? Yeah. OK. So it's going to go through and approach like that. All right. Now, typically, like I said, you'd have to go ahead and show two more points. Just to kind of keep this video going along, I just want to show you how to do at least two of them. But for each of these points, I want you to do two to the left and two to the right. All right. That's why it's very helpful to just have a graphing calculator so you guys can use your table function to um, determine these two points. You're not going to have to graph it, so don't worry about graphing it. But you are going to have to at least choose the values um, to the left and to the right. Okay. And the last thing I just want to mention with you guys is remember these asymptotes. 
as you look at this graph, these, this, if you guys remember asymptotes we talk about as a graph approaches infinity, right? So look at as my graph is approaching infinity, and it is approaching each one of these asymptotes. You can see the graph. They're getting closer and closer to each one of these asymptotes. It's OK that it crosses the slant. But after it crosses it, it's now approaching that asymptote as it goes to negative infinity. All right. Same thing with as it goes to infinity, it's approaching now this asymptote. And that's really about it, all that I have for you. Any last questions? No? All right.